Hi everyone, and welcome to the first of the My Guest List Pod review shows. This smaller format show is going to be an adjunct to my main show and revolve around reviews and recommendations, rather than the interviews with creators I do on my other show. However, I could do this show every day for the rest of my life and still wouldn't get to review every podcast that exists now, so I'm going to be selective with the shows I review and recommend, but I'll probably focus on the indie podcasts that you may not generally see on the new and noteworthy or what's hot sections of your podcast apps. Obviously, if something is good and worth a listen, just because it's popular or backed by a bigger network isn't going to stop me from recommending it. Good is good. But where I can support smaller independent podcasts and give them some love, I definitely will. Hopefully, I will be able to get the word out on a load of shows that I think are worthy, and I can broaden your listening landscape. As such, I couldn't think of a better show to be first cab off the rank than the one I've chosen for you today. This week, I'm very excited to speak about one of my favourite audio dramas, Who knew that randomly searching for something to listen to while weeding in the garden one day would lead to the hours of listening pleasure that this show and similar shows from the same network would provide me? Tannis is an episodic audio drama presented in a documentary-style format that draws you in from the very first episode. The way they explain it is, it's television for your ears. Tannis is set in the woods of the Pacific Northwest, but the story encompasses elements from far and wide. There are shadowy government and private organisations and plenty of cult activity to keep you guessing as to what is actually going on. Its host, Nick Silva, has a very listenable voice and the dialogue is skilled at conveying just the right feeling for the story at each step. Fear, curiosity, excitement, it leaves you in no doubt of what emotion you should be experiencing. The story entwines the past and the present with references to well-known historical allegories and real-world eccentric figures to give you the platform from which Nick embarks on the quest to the central question, what is Tannis? Some stories have layers, history, detailed recorded mass sightings, grainy videos, blurry photographs, and countless witnesses. Are these stories, with their multiple first-hand accounts, years, decades, and sometimes even centuries of so-called evidence, more likely to be true? Sometimes we come across something different, a genuine mystery, something that appears to have no recorded history no website, and no public record at all. Something uniquely strange and mysterious. This is one of those stories. Along the way, the show introduces intriguing characters, some coming to even rival the host Nick in their popularity. Big shout out to MK here. And if there is a cooler voice than that of the Cameron Alice character, I'd like to hear it. But all the voice actors are fantastic, and they play their parts very convincingly. The show's ambient music, and in particular the soundscape, make it the complete package. It's really well done, and its level of production can have you believing that you are actually listening to a story as it unfolds in the real world. Here's a taste of MK, Cameron Alice, and that soundscape. Tannis. I thought you said tennis. Yeah, this thing has five letters. It could be tennis. Yeah, that actually makes sense. That's Mere Catnip. I'm guessing not her real name. She's an expert in illicit underground internet commerce, among other things. It took me three weeks and a whole lot of Bitcoin to get her to agree to a five-minute Skype conversation. So what I'm looking for is anything related to the myth of something called Tanis. And you said you want me to exclude the ancient Egyptian shit? Right. Well, there's not a lot. Yeah, I'm not surprised. The stuff you're looking for might be pre-digital? Uh, I have no idea what I'm looking for. You're sure this is some kind of famous thing? I'm actually not sure about anything. (sighs) It's your money. Frankly, I thought I'd be hearing from you much sooner. I've been busy. I understand. I'd like to know what's going on with... The breach? Yes, the breach. I'd rather not discuss it over the phone. Can you come over to my office? Okay. Will you be driving yourself or should I send a car? I'll be there in half an hour. There's a story. Well, there are a lot of stories, but there's one story in particular that's maybe more of a legend than a story, actually. It's set in the woods of the Pacific Northwest, 
just outside of Olympia, Washington. It's an ancient Native American tale about malicious spirits that haunt the deep emerald woods, one section of the forest in particular, an area where the birch trees grow thin and tall and the birds allegedly stop singing. In this section of the forest, centuries after the natives of this region first began telling their stories about the area, right around the time of the witch trials in Salem, Massachusetts, to add a bit of arcane flavor to the tale, two young children left their parents at home and went for a walk in the woods. It was raining. There was a light mist which covered the area in a hazy, diffuse fog making it hard to see more than a few feet in front of their faces. So it was, when the children stepped into this particular section of the woods, the area filled with the incredibly tall, thin birch trees, it took them a moment to realize that there were 407 bodies hanging from the trees. Many people consider the Olympia Woods Massacre fictional, Others believe that it was a mass suicide. Either way, for decades after the alleged event, for whatever reason, people continue to kill themselves in the area, in comparatively large numbers. To this day, the locals routinely send patrols into the woods near Olympia, looking for bodies. Adding to this fiction reality characteristic of the show is, as I mentioned in the beginning, that it seamlessly includes a multitude of references to real-world tales, myths, and otherworldly occurrences that become integral parts of the Tannis story. It also includes, or merges, parts of Nick's, in quotes, off-show life as part of the Tannis story. Amusingly, this only adds to some listeners' confusion as to what is real and what is story. If you listen to the listeners' mail episodes, you will see what I mean. Some of the members of the tennis community and their listener emails are playing along with and into the story, but I am sure some of the listeners maybe have bought in a little too far. But that's just testament to the great story and the fantastic production values. It's just that good. So if you like a well-produced audio experience combined with an exceptional story, setting and characters, then give tennis a listen. It may leave you not wanting to ever venture into the woods of the Pacific Northwest, but you will be entertained. And don't forget to check out all the other fantastic Public Radio Alliance and Minnow Beats Whale shows, which I will definitely eventually get around to reviewing at some time. The Black Tapes, Rabbits, The Last Movie Podcast, Fairy, they are all worth your time. So, that's it. You can get in touch with this show by email or on Twitter or at Instagram, all at my guest list pod. If you give Tannis a listen, then let me know and tell me what you think. Also, let me know if there is a show that you would like me to review or just that I might be interested in. Don't forget to check out my main show where I interview the hosts of podcasts and have some fun with them as we count down their top 10 lists and get to know them and their work a little bit better. If you would like to support this show or both shows, please subscribe, rate and review us wherever you can. And if you would like to further support either show, you can head on over to my Patreon where funds raised will go towards making these shows better and be directed back into the podcasting community and directly support indie podcasts. I intend to have plenty of giveaways and competitions and buy merch from other shows to use as prizes, donating whatever is left over to the shows I feature. Thanks for your time, and I'll chat at you again in two weeks. <laughs>